What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jam at Full Grip Games. Today, I'm going to be showing off a Catterday deck that a viewer of the channel posted in the viewer Discord for Twitch subs said that they played against it online and were very impressed by how deck this has been performing. So I uh, gave it a spin on stream, and the deck is a ton of fun to play, and I really look forward to showing this deck off on the channel and seeing what it could do in some gameplay. As we can see, we have another zero energy deck on our hands. You don't have to use any energy in order to deal damage with this deck because of the Gathering of Cats ability combined with the abilities on both Coughing and Wheezing combined with the Roxy engine dealing snipe damage and then taking advantage of that snipe damage with Esper, who you may be familiar with from Malamar decks for its Ear Kinesis attack. Little known fact about Esper is that it also has the Catter Day attack, and Pokemon that have the Catter Day attack can attack for free because of Persian's Gathering of Cats ability, which reads, ignore all energy in the attack cost of each of your Pokemon in play that has the Catter Day attack. So that means that the Esper can attack for free as well as Meowth stick whose perplexing eyes attack makes it so that the defending pokemon's weakness is now psychic until the end of your next turn which is interesting never really uh used for much more than just dealing 70 which is definitely useful and then of course spell tag dealing snipe damage as well so we have a lot of ways to deal damage wherever we want on our opponent's side of the field no energy required. We're going to really lean into that Roxy engine promoting Lily's Polka Dolls while we go for the double either coughing or wheezing or combination of the two Roxy combo to draw six cards and place two damage counters on all of our opponent's Pokemon. Then once we've done that a couple of times, you load up some damage on their field. It can start using Ear Kinesis for big numbers on benched targets. And then also... Putting the spell tags onto the espers helps to clean up anything else that uh, is small on the opponent's side of the field, like Jirachis, or getting the numbers just right on a Pokemon GX in order to ear Kinesis the following turn for a knockout. This deck is really fun to play. It's got a lot of moving parts. We use Zacian V in the Intrepid Sword ability to help set up and draw cards in the early turns. Then we can set up Sensino and make do every turn to draw even more cards. And I just really... Really do love this deck. The Fion is awesome in here as well because you can use Whirlpool Suction to push the opponent's active Pokemon onto the bench. Since Ear Kinesis can only target uh, bench Pokemon, it does 20 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon for each damage counter on that Pokemon. So if a Pokemon has 60 damage on it, then you can Ear Kinesis it and deal 120. So if they have 180 HP, they'd be KO'd. But since you can only target bench Pokemon, it's important to be able to push the active Pokemon to the bench if you want to deal damage to that active Pokemon with your Kinesis. So Fion combos really well with this deck too. The Marshadow is good uh, just in case you need to remove any stadiums from play. Mew from Unbroken Bonds, very essential to prevent your opponent from just sniping whatever you have trying to set up on your side of the field. And then Shadow Box Mimikyu, also great against Mewtwo and Mew Tag Team GX decks. Uh, I've definitely been fond of this deck. It's a lot of fun. Let's get into some gameplay and see how it does. As you can see, I have dubbed this deck Cat Dog because of obviously the Catter Day attack. Then we also have our uh, our dog in the deck, the Zacian V with the sword, of course. So Cat Dog felt like a very fitting name. And I have to say, with everything going on in the world right now, hopefully everybody at home is staying safe. Uh, I'm really happy to be able to produce this content from my studio. So thank you guys all so much for tuning in, whether you're at home from school or still out there uh, at work or whatever you're doing. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching the channel and make sure that everybody is staying safe uh, wherever they are and being cognizant of the people around them, people that might be susceptible um, to uh to the disease that's uh that's going around so thank you guys all so much for tuning in and uh just uh thoughts and prayers going out to everybody who is suffering from this current situation especially with jobs and everything like that going on i know that things are really tough restaurants here in ohio just got shut down so there is a lot on people's minds right now and uh, i have to say it definitely 
feels nice to be able to still be social on Pokemon Trading Card Game Online and still interact with people we know and love in a safe uh, environment like this on the digital platform. So very thankful for, for what I get to do here at Full Grip Games and play the Pokemon Trading Card Game Online where uh, we don't have to necessarily interact with too many people. So that is a huge blessing and I'm very thankful for that. We've got a pretty good opening hand. We've got Meowth in the active position. My opponent's got that Mew from Unbroken Bonds. So we are going to have to take care of that because it's got that bench barrier ability. And um, it is going to be able to stop our Ear Kinesis from damaging our opponent's side. But we do have the Roxy uh, double coughing and wheezing combo in hand already. So I'll just bench this Esper. And we're good to go. Just wait and see what my opponent does next turn. I really have everything that I need in the opening hand. And you may have noticed that I have paired this deck down to just the Roxy engine. The list that I originally found uh, was playing a couple of Marnies in it as well. But I think that uh, really you just want to be using Roxy every single turn. And it looks like we are playing against a Cinderace deck here. So this should be pretty good for us because we are going to be able to capitalize on the fact that our opponent is going to have some smaller Pokemon in play like Jirachi, this Mew from Unbroken Bonds. These guys can all get sniped with the um, Blow Away Bomb ability. And then Cinderace is capable of taking knockouts on our, on our Pokemon, of course, but uh, it's not really going to be able to trade well with the Pokemon we have. And we also do have those dolls, which is going to be very strong for us. So we're going to start off with a Roxy and get a big draw. We got the adventure bag as well. So if I would like to retreat this Meowth out of the active, I can also, well, Persian has got free retreat, which is really nice. Something that I do forget about sometimes. The free retreat on Persian is phenomenal. So I think that I do like having the Mincino down. That's great. We also have the Persian available to us with the free retreat. And I can't just put, uh, you want to be careful. You can't just like put Mew from Unbroken Bonds in the active position with a spell tag because then your opponent could uh, kind of call your bluff and never actually attack it. And uh, you're in this weird spot where you can't actually retreat. So you will have to just rely on uh, never using any other, you know, ear kinesis. We just don't, ha don't have a switch in the deck. It's just air balloon. So have to be careful about who you put in the active position with this deck. We were not able to find ourselves. Let's see, we got another Meowth. I will use Pokemon Communication real quick just to take another look into the deck. We got this Mew from Unbroken Bonds. And let's see what else we can find, if anything. We can get Ditto, we get Zacian. I think I really do want Zacian to help us draw cards, even though we don't necessarily need it. I think it could be very good. And I'm not sure what kind of gust effect this deck plays. So we're going to go with that and then I think just retreat into this Meowth to offer up a prize. Um, that's probably fine. And then just go from there. So we'll just Intrepid Sword. And I could use the Fion. That's probably fine. I'm just going to push that Jirachi out of the active position. Uh, just to be a little bit annoying, if the Mew has to retreat into the Jirachi, that's fine. Just makes it less likely that my opponent is going to be able to stream attacks. And then we're going to Adventure Bag, thin the deck a little bit more, get these guys out of the deck, and just check real quick. My second Persian is in the deck in case I need to get that out, and we'll just Intrepid Sword. So I guess actually I can't also, funny enough, Catterday. Uh, I'm not going to. I'll just Intrepid Sword since that is stronger than Catterday. Put ourselves to sleep to draw two cards. But that is uh, a little bit of an interesting... Um, you know, an interesting facet of this deck as well, that you can actually use the Catterday deck, uh, the Catterday attack on Meowth. So um, Zacian is going to be our main draw card early on. And we'll see what kind of strategies my opponent can uh, come up with to gust my Zacian V. I'm not sure if they play custom catchers in the deck. If so, they'll have two gusts available to them. And if they KO the Zacian, that's fine. It means they're using some gusts to take out the Zacian. And then once I do find my Polka Dolls, we're going to be able to put these dolls in the active. Now, the Cinderace does have 170 hit points. So that is quite a bit and a lot to work through. And we see that they are able to get that turn to attack on the Meowth. So that is a uh, very strong for them and a very explosive start. But fortunately, my start looks to be very promising as well. We're gonna go with the Evolution Incense first to get ourselves the Cincino out of the deck. And I can use this Palpad to throw another 
Roxy back in, increasing my chances of finding the Roxy again. Now we do have a whole lot of Poke Gears in the deck to help us find those, but I think that using the Pal Pad first uh, will be beneficial to us. So we're gonna use that Pal Pad, throw the Roxy back into the deck. Really, if I use five Roxies throughout the course of the game, I think I win. So I'm not terribly concerned about that. And then we are gonna save that quick ball because we definitely want to be able to find ourselves another coughing if we find a Roxy. So we got ourselves into a Pokemon Communication and an Esper. I'm thinking that we're gonna start going for the Roxy and there it is. So we've got ourselves the double, yeah, I think I'm just gonna Pokecom this so I don't have to discard anything, get ourselves the wheezing out of, well, let's see, we have two Lure Balls in the deck right now, I think, yes. So the coughings are a little bit harder to recover than the wheezings. So I think we'll go for coughing. And then we're going to Roxy and do the double coughing combo on our opponent's Pokemon and spread 20 more damage and get a whole bunch of cards in our hand. Look at that double Roxy. I mean, it feels pretty good there for sure. And I'm thinking that, uh, you know, in order to stream attacks, they do have to get this back to the bench, right? So that might be a little bit tough for them to do as well. And I'm thinking here that we're just going to retreat into an Esper with a spell tag and pass. At that point, if they'd hit into my Esper, then uh, I am okay to just KO that Mew and get it out of the way which seems very good for us, especially since my hand is just so strong right now. Uh, I know I can't ear Kinesis because of the Mew, but that's okay. We're just going to leave it here and pass and hope that my opponent, uh, I guess I can use Catterday, right? So I'll put myself to sleep. That's fine. Draw a card and leave the Esper asleep in the active. So that's, uh, that's a good turn for us. I mean, we're close to knocking out the Score Buttony, the Jirachi, and the Mew. And uh, we see that they are gonna be able to stream another attack on this Cinderace. Uh, they do have, wow, that Fion, that's very strong. I was not able to find another doll. Could have got myself a second Esper into play. Uh, I did forget about the Fion as a potential opportunity there for them to uh, get that going. I'm gonna give them the Cincino and not the Zacian. The Zacian would be, I think, way too good of uh, a card to give up. So we're gonna give away the Cincino. That's fine, surprise. I'll get myself a second Esper down with a spell tag on it to make sure that they are not able to do that again. And we should be able to clear that Mew out of play and open up the possibility to start sniping my opponent's side uh, very heavily. Now this is gonna start to get really out of control. Uh, we've really got ourselves in a, uh, in a very good space. So let's uh, start to recover some of those wheezings here. Uh, we've got one back. Let's see, I can also get uh, myself potentially the Encino back if I want it. Uh, I do have a second Lure Ball, but we don't need it quite yet. I'm going to Quick Ball away another Quick Ball and get ourselves another Coughing too. So now we can do the Roxy double combo again for the third time. We're seeing how consistent this is, able to get that uh, double Roxy combo over and over and over again. So I'm thinking here that we want to knock out probably the Raboot on my opponent's side so that they just don't have a lot of uh, pivot options. They can pivot to the Jirachi, but that Jirachi's going down and it's gonna be pretty easy for me to keep control of the board at this point. I could also just go in with the Meow Stick and deal 70 damage to the active. I'm gonna save that for a little bit later, I think. Put that Esper there, and I can start to rod some things back in. If I would like to get myself the, um, if I would like to get myself that Cincino set back up, I don't really think I need to though, and I don't think that my opponent's going to disrupt my hand too bad. So I'm not terribly worried about that yet. We're gonna save those recovery cards in my hand. I think maybe it's time to launch a fishing rod, like one coughing into the deck just in case my hand does get disrupted. So I think we are gonna put that back in and then I can put an air balloon back in too, that's fine. And then we are going to ear kinesis, my opponent's Raboot for knockout, um, which is totally cool. So we're going to limit them really to just one Cinderace. And if they do put another score bunny down, I will be able to probably pull off the Roxy double combo again, assuming that I can get one of these wheezings back with that 
Lure Ball, and then I can go and Quick Ball again for my coughing that I have in the deck, and we'll be able to spread 20 damage again, taking out the Jirachi. And my opponent is starting to probably figure out that like, wow, my, my Pokemon are not going to make it through this very easily. Um, if I keep doing this, uh, you know, if I keep doing this Roxy uh, double combo every single turn, and they're probably hoping like eventually that I miss it or something like, and they've done a great job streaming attacks. They got a turn two attack. They got a, a Fion turn three to push around my spell tag. So I did miss out on that. And now we've got the double spell uh, spell tag combo. So they're going to have to hit into it, which is just really uh, pretty devastating. So we're going to take out the I think at this point we can take out this and then we can put this to, I could put all four here and we could knock out the Cinderace. We don't need to put all four here to do that. I need to put two here to put it at 80 and then we could do that and I could deal 70 damage. So we do two here and then we can put two here and then we're going to end up knocking out the Jirachi with our double Roxy combo. So you can see that the the plan is starting to really come to fruition and this Meow Stick is very strong in the deck. So let's start off with, I mean, I love the Evolution Incense because that just goes and gets you wheezing out of the deck, which is a lot of times exactly what you want. So we'll just go get double wheezing and, uh, and then use Roxy to deal the damage that we need to deal. And then we're gonna look at kind of where we're going from there. So let's go there and get rid of these guys. And we're gonna deal two damage counters to everything. We finally found ourselves one of our four dolls as well, which is just very good because I can buy time with that if I need to, but I don't even think that we need to, to be honest, because we are just going to be clearing just about everything from my opponent's side of the field. We've got the Meow Stick there. I've got an Esper I can put onto the bench. We've got a Spell Tag we can put onto that as well. We've got the Doll, which is like super good against Fion if we happen to get uh, Gusted. And then we could just perpe Perplexing Eyes the active. And I don't think that there's gonna be any way that my opponent can really come back from this. The 70 damage there, perfect. They would have to get Rare Candy into uh, a Score Bunny just to be able to attack this next turn. And then they would have to switch it to the bench and then they'd have to bring it back into the active, which is just asking an awful lot at this point. So I'd say at this point in the game, we are completely under control and uh, going to be able to uh, to win pretty handily, I would say. Now, they did put the Mew from Unbroken Bonds back into the deck, and we're getting Marnied, which is kind of tough because I do not have that Cincino set up. We lost that earlier on the Fion, but it looks like they're telling me well played, like they kind of know what it is. Yep, that Score Bunny, they did not find a Rare Candy into Cinderace, and that thing was going to go down to a Meow Stick the following turn. So Cat Dog looking really strong. Let's run it back for one more game and see how it does. Now, one of the weaknesses of this deck can be RCS Tagapakia. ADP is pretty tough deck to play against because of that Altered Creation GX attack, capable of just shortening the life of the game and taking bonus prizes on all of your poor espers. That being said, the deck does take pretty positive matchups against many other things. I think we do take a positive matchup against Malamar. We take a positive matchup against Baby Blacephalon, Blacephalon GX decks. Uh, of course, we do have to look out from not, for Nine Tails from Team Up. That could be a tough card to play around, just because of the fact that uh, the fact that they can gust around our dolls every turn. It looks like we are playing against Malamar, so this should be a pretty good matchup for us. And we've got a very strong opening hand, so I will gladly just trade away. I think Fion go get ourselves Zacian. And we could just start by drawing three cards with Intrepid Sword. So that's cool. And I've got Roxy in my hand for the next turn of the game, which is just fantastic. And we've got everything that we want here. Pokemon Communication can go and trade one of these cards in my hand to get that Persian out into play. And we could start using Ear Kinesis to just do damage to my opponent's side of the field pretty quickly and efficiently. Now, one of the issues in this matchup is that they do always play Mew from Unbroken Bonds. So we are gonna have to deal with that first and foremost by doing the Roxy double coughing wheezing combo uh, three times. And then once we've done that or make them hit into a spell tag, then we are in the clear. Now, I think that I could probably get a little greedy and put a spell tag onto my Mew and just say, hey, you know, you'll probably hit into this at some point. And I think that they are more, more or less going to have to 
And they could always just go for their own snipe strategy, which is something that I've seen some Malamar decks try before. They can just put their own Mew from Unbroken Bonds in the active and start sniping my Pokemon, trying to take KOs that way. But I am able to play around that uh, three prize. Um, oh, this is looking like maybe a Mew box deck featuring maybe. Just because a, a you know Malamar deck plays Gengar and Mimikyu doesn't mean it's a Mewtwo and Mew version. So I'm, I'm guessing that this is still, you know, judging by the Jirachi, still a non-GX focused Malamar deck, maybe with Giratina, but it just happens to also play the Gengar and Mimikyu tag team GX. My opponent does not decide to bench that. They do have three Inkes on the field though, so we're gonna love this. Just getting that uh, that quick Roxy double coughing. So let's go and deal that. Love the artwork on those coughings as well. It's just so sick and uh, a lot of fun to play with those. And then uh, I'm going to give them the smile of the face. They're saying, I have a good deck. So, uh, like I said, Malamar, good matchup for this deck. Gotta love that. We can use Pokemon Communication and go get ourselves. I think we're not going to need that guy. We go get ourselves the Meowth and we're going to do that. And then I have another Pokemon Communication and I can go get myself the Minchino, so I do like that too. We can trade one of these Persians into the deck, get the Minchino, and then I think I am gonna use the Fion to push around. We can Whirlpool Suction, get that Jirachi out of the active position, and we're just gonna Intrepid Sword again. So we've got a great start here, Wheezing in the hand too, so that we can Evolution Incense, and if we find a Pokegear, uh, you know, find Roxy off of the Pokegear, or just off the Intrepid Sword, then we're good to go next turn again. And uh, we're gonna say, um, smiley face again. So awesome, yeah, please don't quit. I'm filming a video, that'd be great. If you could just let it happen here, that would be fantastic. <laughs> so uh, we'll give them the old smiley face and see if that lifts their spirits as all. Well. You know, while I try to roxy their field into oblivion, that would just be great. But in all of my experience, Malamar has been a, a super good matchup for us. I mean, their board just starts to melt so fast as we do the Roxy combo every single turn. And they also don't really have any way to disrupt our hand, which is so huge because uh, this deck loves to just have a big hand. It plays amazing with a ginormous hand like this, and we just don't want that hand to go anywhere. So they have to pass, which is just phenomenal for us. We've got another Roxy combo again. So let's just uh, go in Evolution Incense, grab ourselves the Weezing out of the deck, and we're gonna go Roxy double wheezing. Save that Poke Gear so that we can stream Roxy another turn. And they're just gonna scoop it up. Yup, I mean, that's how that goes. Against Malamar decks, super free matchup. And all we have to do is just spread a few times and they're more or less uh, ready to scoop up the cards. We'll go for one more since that last one was kind of a uh, quick in and out, but uh, you know, I mean, Malamar is just that kind of matchup where their Pokemon don't have enough hit points to really be able to uh, sustain themselves against the Roxy turn after turn after turn. And then because you can play around their Baby Blue Cephalon, it is pretty easy to uh, to control where the prizes are at between you two. And uh, you, you're definitely favored in that sniping kind of mirror. So we'll see what this last game has in store for us. Uh, like I said, Zacian ADP can be kind of tough. Any deck that just gets out the gates very quickly, if you're struggling to find your Roxies, we saw there we opened Roxy uh, in those last couple of games and we're able to just get that explosive draw right off the start and really ham into our decks, which is like awesome. But sometimes you get Marnied very quickly and that can be very challenging for this deck. Sometimes, you uh, you know you ha you have trouble drawing out of those Marnie situations. Sometimes your opponent is Marnieing and then hit hitting you very quickly with Sasha and Cinder. Like oh gosh. Uh, but that being said, if your opponent does not disrupt your hand too much, definitely uh, you're definitely just very consistent as deck, and it's pretty easy to get your your hands on those uh, Roxy combos that you're looking for. So let's start off with the Pokemon Communication, just get rid of the Meow Stick, and we can see every single turn we're going and, and trying to find that Zacian. Who's prized? Why are you prized? It's cool. We've got the Meowth in Persian, and I also have a Minchino in my deck. So we're just going to go here and put that Meowth down, put the Minchino down, and then next turn we can Evolution Incense for 
a cinch, you know, and we're going to start drawing some cards. So that's great. Looks like I might be playing against maybe a Macargo GX deck, um, judging by the Oranguru and the fact that I saw fire in their deck type. And sure enough, there's the Slugma. Now, something to really look out for in this Macargo matchup is the GX attack. Now, we do draw through our deck very quickly. So we have to be very cognizant of the fact that they can go with that Burning Magma GX. Now, this list used to have some Marnies in it. I found myself never using them. I think that Marnie is a card that would be very useful against uh, specifically McCargo GX. But generally speaking, I think that we are favored for the most part in this matchup. So I'm not terribly concerned about uh, putting Marnie's in the deck just so that we don't get Burning Magma GX. I think that so long as we really are aware of the fact that, you know, when we're getting into the bottom of our deck to kind of chill and not draw so much and also use our cards like Ordinary Rod and Lana's Fishing Rod and even Pokemon Communication just to put Pokemon back into the deck and then not choose a selection off Pokemon Communication to make sure that we're not decking ourselves out. We also have the Poke Dolls we can throw back into the deck, uh, which is very useful sometimes as well. And it looks like I'm getting magma rigged here. Cannot retreat, it's fine, wasn't planning on it. We do find spell tag, which is very useful. And I've got evolution incense. So we're just gonna go grab ourselves that Sanchino. So we start drawing cards, because uh, to be honest, we are gonna get ourselves into kind of a tight spot here if I don't start finding things. So we're gonna make do, discard the Weezy, and see what we can find. We've got Lure Ball and Alana's Fishing Rod, it's fine. And uh, I can actually use Catterday, so that's great because of the gathering of Cat's ability. So we'll draw a card. And there's no damage counters to be placed any, you know, with uh, Ear Kinesis, so we will gladly draw. And if they do hit into us with the Esper, that's cool too. And uh, maybe we can go and Lana's Fishing Rod the Esper back into the deck and hopefully draw into it. And another thing I can do is I could buy time with the Coughing if I have to. Uh, we could just put the coughing with the spell tag into the active, and really, so long as we're kind of getting some damage on the field, doesn't really matter how it gets there. We do need to probably find a Roxy eventually, but uh, we can buy some time here in the early stages. Now, one of the tough parts about this matchup, particularly, is that all the Pokemon, generally speaking, have pretty decent amount of hit points. 120 hit points on a Ranguru is certainly a lot more than the 70 on Jirachi. 70 on Jirachi is nothing. We can easily take care of that with Spell Tag and a couple of Roxy plays. But Oranguru is going to be a little bit tougher to take down. Um, we'd have to Roxy six times in order to do that. But uh, the Macargo GXs are pretty reasonable as far as two prize Pokemon are concerned. So 210 is not the hardest thing for us to hit, especially if they're hitting into Spell Tags. Now, we do have to look out for this deck because it might play the team up nine tails and if they do play team up nine tails then that could be very challenging for us because they're going to be able to gust every turn taking out key cards like persian and Sinchino and stuff like that so it does look like they're setting up very well it's turn two they've got mccargo they've got ditto who they i will promptly knock out if you put that ditto <laughs> onto the bench uh i know where all four of my spell tag damage will go that is for sure if they try to do that. So they probably are in a situation where like, hmm, I would like to put the ditto down, but I also don't want it to get KO'd by a spell tag. So they're just actually gonna get the ditto right on out of there. And I think they kind of understand that they are up against a deck that might be trying to snipe. So they don't want to give up that free prize with the ditto, which is understandable. That being said, getting the nine tails out is very helpful. So it's kind of like a win-win uh, for me. If they put the ditto down, I knock it out. If they uh, don't put the ditto down. I don't have to deal with nine tails. So we do have that going for us. But I got a ton of fire in hand. I'm just going to Lava Flow. Take that knockout. And I would like to place my damage counters, I think, just onto the benched McGargo. Seems most reasonable. We'll just start ramping that dam damage up over there. And let's see. We've got Persian we can promote. And we've got to find some cards. So let's see what we can do. we got Quick Ball. That's good. So I can guarantee myself another Pokemon. Lure Ball. Get myself that Weezing out of the discard pile. I definitely want to keep the Spell Tag. I think the weakest card in this particular hand is probably the Lana's Fishing Rod, even though it's also very good. 
Maybe a little blur ball. We're gonna make do blur ball. Let's see what we do from there. Got pal pad, double coughing. Still nothing so far. So we do want to quick ball and get ourselves an Esper to be able to draw another card. So, you know, every card that we get at this point, very valuable. So I think we are gonna quick ball away potentially the pal pad. <laughs> That's really tough. We're gonna get rid of that and we're gonna go get ourselves Esper out of the deck. And we're gonna draw some more cards. So we got that. Here, spell tag. And I could, I mean, I think I have to cat or day. Yeah. I uh, mean, I could put 80 damage there. We got Meow Stick. Not necessarily the most useful, but it's fine. And then next turn, I'm going to get three more cards, Encino, and uh, a couple more. Could Lana's Fishing Rod. I'm going to put, I think, the Esper and Spell Tag back into the deck. And then uh, we'll make do again and just try to get ourselves into a situation where we're more or less stabilized. They only have to discard one energy to knock out my espers. So they are really cruising along here and we're seeing just how tough it is when we prize Zosh in. Uh, the deck's kind of clunking out on us. We were not able to find any Roxies early on. I can't even find a Poke Gear. I've got the Pokemon in my hand, we're ready to go. Uh, the Island Challenge Amulet, also really tough uh, for this deck. I mean, I guess that makes it so that my cargo only has uh, 110 hit points, which is fine. But that's like, a, you know, kind of a, a weird realm for me. It's like up near a rank 120 hit points. That's a lot. I'd rather KO a bunch of Pokemon that got like 60, 50 hit points. Something like that. Pokemon 110 hit points. Uh, you know, I would rather take two prizes on those. So that's fine. Island Challenge Amulet is going to bring that thing down to just 110 hit points. And they will be eating this uh, spell tag again, which is nice. I do like that. And uh, I could potentially put four more over there. What, seven? I could put three more there. That's kind of relevant. I put three more. Actually, if I just put one more and then I get the Roxy double combo, you know, then we're really cooking because I can put five to seven and then, you know, deal 140 and that's a knockout. So that I think is like the the real nice math. I put one there and then we just go for it. Like I'm going to make do into the perfect two cards these next this next turn. So I do like one damage counter there and then I'm putting the other three over here. Um, seven's the magic number for the Macargos so that our ear kinesis can take a knockout. We can see they have definitely committed to the no nine tails line here. So we've got make do. I think I want to make do. Hmm. I want to make do first. Give myself a higher chance of. Oh, yeah. Let's go. All right, so we've got Evolution Incense, and we can get ourselves the Weezing, and then I can Alana's Fishing Rod, and we're going to throw the Esper and Spell Tag into the deck. And then we're going to Roxy and finally get that Snipe going that I had wanted. And we find ourselves the Esper, which is awesome. And you can see, like, really, all you got to do is just find that Roxy. And then once the Roxy is found, we can just explode into these huge hands, which is so nice. Um, we've got the Esper to take the KO, which is awesome. I can also Pokemon Communication this. Uh, I can also just use this Mimikyu, which is great. It means that they're not going to be able to accelerate more energies onto themselves. So that means that they have to manually attach every turn. So the Mimikyu is a big deal. And then we're going to use Pokemon Communication, I think, to just get myself um, potentially, we'll just, we'll just grab another coughing. I was saying it might be nice to set up another Esper, or something like that. And then I could potentially go into that Esper next turn to just guarantee myself some damage. I think that's fine. Yeah, we're gonna grab Esper and just have that on the board. And then we're gonna go and take our knockouts on this guy, 140 damage to the bench. It's great. Pal pad, to be honest, I'm fine throwing that Roxy back in with the pal pad because we're kind of 
in a sketchy spot here where we we're just trying to take our knockouts as quickly as possible since we did get off to a rough start. We found Quick Ball and Zashin there. So pretty good draw for us. This next turn, I can Sinchino. Again, we'll be able to make do. If I find another Roxy off the Poke Gear, then I've got Quick Ball Evolution Incense, can get the Coughing and Wheezing to my hand. And then this Macargo GX is at 70, which is perfect math. And I can Ear Kinesis again for another two prizes. Now, the toughest part about this deck is going to be uh, not taking out these Macargo GXs, but taking out the Orangaroos. If I, you know, my final two prizes are these two Orangaroos, then that's going to be pretty tough. Uh, well, it does look like they're building up another Macargo over here, potentially. And they've got Great Ball. And I have not found any of my dolls yet either. So they have Dedenne. Now, if Dedenne hits the field, then we're really in a good spot because Dedenne is great. 160 hit points, easy to KO. Even if they put an Island Challenge amulet on it, cool. 60 hit point basic Pokemon. Actually, no, if they put an Island Challenge amulet, oh, I just realized. The Island Challenge amulet actually is a huge misplay against this deck. Because if I can KO this Macargo GX, I just, I forgot about this. Um, if I can KO this GX with snipe damage, then I still take my two prizes. So that alters my game plan completely. My game plan is going to be to just knock out all of these and then to KO this Macargo, not with the near Kinesis, but with some spell tag damage, hopefully. So that is an alternative out for me. I did forget, yes, that the uh, Island Challenge am Amulet only triggers if you're knocked out by damage from an attack. So Ear Kinesis would trigger that Island Challenge Amulet's effect. However, um, not Spell Tag and certainly not Roxy double coughing and wheezing. So we'll see what we can do this next turn. Got a wheezing in the hand. That's great. Love that. The feeling's also very good. So with that wheezing top deck, I can actually make do get rid of the quick ball. I should not need that to go get my coughing. And we actually just draw into the coughing naturally. So we're hoping that we can find ourselves, let's see, I'm just gonna grab that out of the deck, find ourselves one of our four Roxies off of this poke gear. That would be very good. We do find one, thank goodness. And we are just cruising here. I get another big knockout. We take double wheezing and we're going to Go in on that McCargo there on the bench. It'll have 70 on it. Perfect numbers for our Esper again. And then this thing is slowly getting whittled down. So I would like to find myself, let's see, we've got the spell tag here. And I would like to find myself another Esper. Ah, I don't have another one. I was gonna say it'd be nice to get this thing really close to a KO. But now if I do 70 damage to it, it's knocked out. So I can't even use the... Uh, can't even use the Meow Stick, so he's just that close to, to a knockout. That's fine. And then I am going to put the Polka Doll into play, just in case. It's a nice little free retreat option to have. And then it's not time for any of these other cards yet, so we're just going to free retreat. And we do have the Spell Tag equipped, so that means that we are going to get to put this active Macargo GX really close to a KO, which is just absolutely busted. And then... Let's see, so we can put this thing to 80, then it will have 30 health left. And if I could just Roxy a couple more times, make my opponent hit into a spell tag a couple more times, I don't plan on actually dealing any attack damage to this Macargo GX, then we should be able to win the game. And again, their abilities are turned off, that's nice. I mean, not the Orangaroo, of course, but shutting off the uh, Macargo's Crushing Charge is pretty decent. It makes them so that they have to welder to attach their energies that are just actually manually replace them with their energy attachment per turn. Now, I think I am down. I mean, I'm down the Ordinary Rod, I'm down a Lure Ball, I or I'm down the Lawn and Fishing Rod and a Lure Ball. I should have an Ordinary Rod somewhere in the deck, and I do have three Roxies left in the deck. And we can see why it was so good to just throw that Roxy back into the deck with the Pal Pad when I had it, because at this point, like we're very close to winning the game. I only need to Roxy a couple more times, so hitting that Roxy last turn was huge and gave me a big momentum swing on that Mancargo GX. So we'll see what they end up doing here. They do have Lava Flow for Knockout, but hitting into the spell tag kind of spells disaster for them. 
So I'm not really sure if they have another way around. Uh, this is the uh, the list from Oceania. Then uh, means that they're only playing the Ditto as a means to get into that uh, that Nine Tails from Team Up, which means that they don't really have any other great options to uh, to Ghost. Now they're going to Dedenne GX into their deck, leaving themselves with just three cards left in deck. So they are pretty low on resources now at this point. And uh, wondering if they're digging for anything. I don't think they have any Gust. Maybe another Island Challenge Amulet. That's fine. Only 60 hit points on that thing? That's wild. I actually just win the game because I can put the spell tag damage over there. And then if I Roxy double onto it, I think I just win. So I, yeah, we're just going to go here. And those Island Challenge Amulets do not protect you against the Roxy. That is a hard lesson to learn, but uh, I'm sure my opponent will not make that mistake again. So let's see, do I have another coughing left in my deck? Do I have three in the discard pile? Might have one left in the deck. So let's see if we can find it here. Should be able to just get rid of that. Another coughing. So we've got a lot of the cards we need now. We can get rid of that Persian, that's fine. Dig a little bit deeper into the deck. We've got Ordinary Rod, don't wanna play that yet. We just want to poke gear and then find that Roxy and then this should just be game. We go Roxy, double coughing and we deal 60 damage to, or you know, get that to Denny up to 60 damage. And then when it gets KO'd, I'm gonna take two prizes and that's gonna be it. So that is super busted. And uh, I forgot the Island Challenge Amulet, not a problem for this deck. We take our two prizes and that's game. So uh, GG's to my opponents. The Roxy deck, a ton of fun to play. As you see, I've dubbed it Cat Dog. It is uh, a really, really fun deck. Zero energy, not a problem. As long as you can get your hands on those Roxies early enough, you really start drawing a huge amount of cards. And then, uh, you know, what's not to like about a deck that runs a random Persian that lets your guys attack for free? Super, super cool. And uh, major props to whoever it was on PTCGO who one of my viewers, uh, you know, uh, got the inspiration from. So thank you again for the inspiration for this uh, this Catterday deck, and hopefully you all enjoy playing it. Thank you all so much for watching the video. Make sure to like the video, sub to the channel, ring that bell, and of course, check us out on Twitch, twitch.tv slash tricky gym, where I stream live Pokemon trading card game content every single weekday. Also, make sure to check out fullgripcodes.com, instant PTCGO code delivery available on fullgripcodes.com, and of course, fullgripgames.com, where our service is very quick and speedy, and I know a lot of people have been really satisfied with the cards they've ordered from fullgripgames.com, so thank you guys so much for shopping there, and uh, you all take it easy, stay safe, and have a great day. Peace.